All right, Holland Stemmer Stone, FightHype.com, here with my man, Andre Rosier. How you feeling today? What a deal, what a deal, what a deal, nephew. Oh, you know, another day, another dollar, man. Yeah. Same old, same yeah. old, man. That's right. So, you know, a couple of things we got to talk on, man. Um, First, let me get your um, your thoughts on when Keith Thurman just pulled out a few, a few days ago. He reportedly has a um, bicep injury. Um, Sebastian from door to steps in. Do you think that's a better fight, a worse fight? What are your whole thoughts on everything, man? Well, I I'll tell you this much. If Fondora wasn't coming off uh, a knockout loss, I would be a little bit more optimistic about what would be going on in this fight with Zoo. But it's going to be tough to come back from a fight like that and then jump right into the waters with a another shark. And, um, it's only time will tell with this one, but me myself, I think it's going to be really tough. Um, although Fondura is six five, he fights like he's five five, and um, he, he always comes to the action. And that's my one concern: uh, did he make changes? Did he make um, modifications to his attack and procedure so that he doesn't always have himself in the line of fire? I'm waiting to see that. Is this a more difficult fight for Zoo? It could be because of the last minute change and he was preparing for an entirely different athlete. Uh, but um, Zoo is a tough guy. He comes to fight. It, it, it's it's going to be interesting. might be challenging, uh, but I think he's going to be successful. Now, it was also reported a few days ago that Terrence Crawford um, activated his super champion status with the WBO, meaning that he gets the first crack at um, Tim Zhu's belt for now. Um, what do you think about that possible matchup, and do you think that Crawford is just going to end up running through Zhu? Well, first off, I think it's fantastic that he did because I didn't want to see TC out any longer than he's been. It's been a moment. It's going to be uh, almost a year in a few more months, so uh, that's not good. Uh, but I'm glad he did uh, exercise his option, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that fight. Although I think that Terrence Crawford is levels above uh, Zoo, it should still be interesting while it lasts. Got to move forward to um, Canelo Munguia. They had their first um, press conference the other day. Um, both guys look pretty pretty serious and pretty ready. What are just your thoughts on that fight? Do you think Munguia has what it takes, or are you just kind of looking at it and just saying, eh, Munguia don't really got too much for Canelo, man? Listen, I appreciate what Munguia brings to the ring. Um, they made a lot about uh, his, his bout with John Ryder, but Ryder was already softened up. He was put in the Vitamix, and uh, Canelo softened him up the fight before, even though he didn't stop him. He sometimes a stoppage is more more uh, poetically justice than being uh, just knocked out. And I think that Canelo did a number on Ryder, softened him up for anybody, and um, that was the result. He got there with Mungia, and he was already damaged goods. Um, you took on um, Canelo with um, Danny Jacobs. You also took on um, uh, Munguia with Torino Johnson and with Sergey Derevchenko. Um, when you kind of look at everything, what fight? What what fight was more difficult to prepare for? Was it Canelo or was it Munguia? Um, actually, it was it was Canelo. Um, when Danny fought Canelo, uh, we. We were basically the, the atmosphere wasn't what it should have been because there's no way you can have told me that Danny couldn't win that fight. I mean, it was close enough for him to, to turn the corner on another round and it would have been a draw. He turned the corner on another round and he wins it. So it was difficult. That was a difficult one. Uh, Toriano made it easy when he fought Munguia. Unfortunately, he had a mouthpiece that cut him in, the, in his lip and but he was bringing justice to that fight. And I, every time Mongia looked in the corner over at me, I saw it in his eyes, like, I didn't expect this. <laughs> and then, of course, we had Sergey against uh, Mongia. And um, enough said, it, it was one heck of a fight. Um, I, if we 
would have had a little bit more in that sixth round, I think he would have stopped Munguia because he was well on his way. The, the, the pressure was on, the referee was looking, paying close attention, and a lot of people don't see the nuances of big fights. But when you have those moments, you, you pay attention to it because you know at any time, if we can turn it up a bit more, that fight is over. Gotcha. Um, I have to ask you, man, in terms of Canelo, um, recently he said that, you know, if if I'm going to fight, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but if I'm going to fight David Benavidez, you know, give me $150 million, $200 million, I'll fight him tomorrow, man. Does that kind of signal to you, like, Canelo's just ducking, Canelo just doesn't want that fight no matter what, unless somebody pays him an extreme amount of money? Well, basically, it's one of two things. You can look at it either or. One way is like, hey, it's a big fight. I want big money for it. The other way is like, if I put a number out there that's astronomical, it ain't going to happen anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know about why Canelo doesn't want to fight David, other than the fact that he blows up to being a cruiserweight and come fight time. And it's going to be a tough fight, but he's been in tough fights. So I, I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I'd love to see it, but it's up to Canelo. He's the man. Would you say that he's doing his best to avoid a, a David Benavidez, though? Would you say that? Or would you say he has too much pride to be labeled as, like, a quote-unquote duck? Well, I think, of course, he, he... I mean, this has been, like, the history of boxing. And, and there have been many fighters who have actually done the same thing uh, didn't fight the guy that everybody wanted him to fight but you know in a sense it was like oh, okay this fight is here this fight is now let's make it and he says no he's going in the hall of fame so he's doing everything he needs to do my best of the best coach in the world <laughs> and um, just making sure that that he controls his the end of his career because he's in the heyday of it and um doing what he wants to do gotcha now social media world was buzzing quite a bit myself included when we seen that random picture of um edgar berlanga and danny jacobs at the nick game facing off had a couple people buzzing man um that fight could possibly happen i know danny is back in the gym and he's working out and stuff like that is a fight between your man danny and your former fighter edgar belanga is that a fight that you want to see happen well i don't want to see it because i don't like uh where well, some people don't mind you know once it, some trainers they go i tell you when manny pacquiao fought uh miguel cotto manny beat miguel and then miguel started training with freddie i mean things of that nature happen but I wouldn't, I don't like it myself, but that doesn't matter because if the fight came to fruition, then of course I have to get Danny ready for whatever or whoever he gets in the ring with. Whoever he might oppose, so he has to be at his best. So I have to get him ready. You know, I, I, I hate putting you, you know, between a rock and a hard place, but I don't ask off questions, man. If that fight were to take place, and I know you got a lot of love for Edgar, and obviously Danny's been your man since the beginning. How does that play out? It's a really big fight. It'll be a big win for both guys since um, Berlanga's not getting the Canelo fight. So how does that kind of play out in your mind, man? Well, it's I, I tell you, um, I have all the confidence in the world in Danny. I know what he can do, even at this point in his career. And since my man Berta B, that's my dude, Berta B, is crunching him at 39 years of age. I say, look, if you a little bit younger than him, you could do it too. So Danny, uh, Danny is uh, working out. He's he's getting it back together. And um, when Danny's on point, it's very very difficult to to beat him. So. I, I know those guys have shared like a lot of sparring sessions with each other. Does that type of stuff matter if, I mean, because I wasn't there for any of the sessions and I know you're not going to tell me and you shouldn't how those sessions were. But do, let's just say one person got way, got the, the better of the other. Do those really matter in a fight, man? Well, honestly, to tell you, nephew, 
they've never sparred. But oh, okay. But when in those sparring sessions, it can and it cannot. Sometimes if, when you get the best of somebody in sparring sessions and you continually do so, it it sort of gets to their their psyche, it gets to their confidence level. But some guys just don't look good in sparring, so and they might not get the best of it, and they don't care because when come fight time, it's a different individual totally. So, does um does Danny have the upper hand just from the standpoint of, you know, when Berlango usually gets to the ring with someone, they're usually wary of his power. Danny's fought all the big punchers. Canelo's a big puncher. Triple G's a big puncher. Um, Peter Quillen was a big puncher. He's fought a shit ton of big punches. So does Danny have the upper hand kind of saying like, I've already been in there with a bunch of big strong guys, man. I ain't worried about that from this kid. Well, he's experienced now. And you're right, he's been in there with some of the biggest punches in his in his, in his his weight class. And um, that's not something that will concern him. Is, is that the fight that makes the most sense for both guys? Honestly, it does. It makes a lot of sense. Um, the the former world champion uh, boxing against the up and coming uh, contender. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't like to see it myself, but it makes a lot of sense. From the time that you had Edgar until now, do you try to use some of the stuff that, okay, I know these were some of his strengths, these were some of his weaknesses, and you try to use that for Daniel, be like, all right, try to attack him. X, Y, and Z, or do you just pop the tape in to some of his more recent performances? No, well, what I do is I just get Danny ready. Mm -hmm. I, I concentrate on his capabilities and his um, articulation, and then we sort of go from there. That's what everybody, I mean, we know what we have to do, and we go ahead setting out the ground plan and the, the game works to make sure that he's successful when he is boxing so we don't quote unquote I'm getting ready for this we just work how difficult is it to get Danny to I guess I want to say have that killer instinct to kind of show like yeah I got it because I mean if you ask me I, I think he had it before and, and that Peter Quillen fight it lasted like a friggin minute <laughs> you know what I mean he had a couple fights before that where he had like a, a, a string of fights where if he wasn't knocking a guy out he was dropping guys repeatedly and just cruising to the finish line. Right. Lately, um, the John Ryder fight, the John Ryder fight, he kind of seemed like his he fell apart during the second half of the fight. And the um, the Gabe Rosado fight, even though he won, it was extremely controversial. Is it hard to be like, this dude has X amount of money in the bank. He really don't need to box. <laughs> you know, like, but you're trying to like, Come on, you know, like how difficult is that, man? Can you do it? Well, what it is, is you have to let them come to you and say, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not burning in their heart, the desire is not at, at a premium, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be a good outcome. We always want it to be something that the athlete is looking forward to doing, to performing, to rising to that occasion where they were before. I was a two-time world champion. I know I could be a champion again. They have to have that mentality. Once they get that, then you know you're ready to do that work. You're ready to get it in. Got it. Um, could you give fans any type of update on um, Demetrius, um, Demetrius Andrade? Um, there was like some a few rumors that he could be possibly fighting. Um, um, Morel. David Morrell, yeah, there have been a few rumors about that. Uh, I mean, shoot, I reached out to Demetrius and he said, you know, he wasn't sure the hell I was talking about. <laughs> so, could you give like a few like, you know, updates, if that possible, and is that going to probably happen? Well, I, honestly, oh, there we go. <laughs> honestly, um, I don't think that fight is happening. Um, Ubu is sort of taking care of business. Um, working on some of his investments, and I don't think he's um, in the frame of mind of some fight taking place in the next couple of months at all, if anything. It might, it will, if anything, it will be towards the latter part of the year. So that's not gonna happen. Gotcha, and just lastly, um, 
You recently told me that Gio, I can't say his last name. Could you say it for me? Giovanni Scuderi. There you go. Um, one of your fighters just picked up a win um, just last week, actually. He's going to be down in, I believe, Spain or something like yes. that. Yes. Um, sparring with Alexander Usyk. Um, kind of, how did that kind of come about? And how proud of you are you of um, Gio for getting that type of sparring? Well, I tell you, it, it came about, to my knowledge, his manager had worked on it. Um, his manager's name is Vito, and that's my little brother from another mother. And uh, he said, I have something to talk to you about, and it's good news, and what do you, I want to know what you think about it. And he told me that uh, Gio had the opportunity to go and spar with, uh, with Usek, and I was like, that's a great look for him. Fantastic. We're just coming off a of win at Madison Square Garden, and hey, if he goes over there and he puts in that good good, the work is sharp, the work is right, you never know. He might be in... in uh, in a position to be on the undercard, which would be fantastic. I've seen it happen, and it would be a great look. Does that make you, and you're one of the most honest guys I know, but does that make you a little biased where you're just like, okay, I gotta rock with Usyk now. He's like my de facto nephew now, you know, <laughs> in the fight against Fury. No. <laughs> 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 no, not not one bit. <laughs> to keep it real, um, you good, bro? I'm a fan of so, Usyk. I'm a fan of Fury. Uh, I love I love both of them as fighters and as champions. And um, it's just that I feel Fury is the the better fighter. That's my opinion. Uh, but Usyk is one hell of a fighter. So until the fight happens, we don't know. But I have to support the guy who I've seen at work. I've seen him. I saw him at a fight. Let me just tell this story real quick. I saw him at a fight, and I thought, I mean, quite honestly, he was like the Pied Piper. He had all the little kids walking around the arena with him. They were taking pictures with everyone. And a, a world champion, a celebrity athlete of that nature, of that stature, who would take the time out to just frolic with the kids and have a good time with them without having an attitude or, oh, no, I can't sign an uh, autograph, I can't take a picture with you. He has all my respect. He has all my kudos, definitely. Gotcha. Big fan of Fury. Well, got to ask you, if, if you do think that Fury does win, um, I think the majority of people probably are taking Fury. I'm taking Usyk, just saying, but I'm normally wrong. But um, <laughs> normally, this is true. <laughs> Don't do me like that. <laughs> but, um, let's just say Fury does get it done, man. The the obvious next big fight for him is Anthony Joshua, and he's looked fantastic lately. Yes. Is, is he the guy we are just like I'm probably taking Fury? But something about Joshua right now, he's on fire. Well, I, I like where Joshua has gone because where he had been was horrible. So I'm liking where he's going. Do I think that will be the end all be all for him in a bout against Fury? No, I still think Fury would be the superior fighter. Not the superior boxer, but the superior fighter. Because Fury fights. And I think that in itself will be the difference between him and Anthony Joshua in a fight, and that's why he'd be victorious. So I guess you don't put any stock into Joshua wiping out Ngannou and Fury almost losing to him, basically. No, not, not at all. Not one bit. I mean, what happened against Ngannou, against Joshua, should have happened with Fury. But I think maybe he took it lightly. I don't know what happened, to tell you the truth. But uh, luckily, he got, got away with the win. So now he can focus on not playing games. And as you can see from the picture I showed you earlier, Hey, Fury is not playing. For sure. It's the first time I've seen him with abs. <laughs> he, he's abolitious right now. It's, it's ridiculous. So that's telling me that he's putting it together. He's ready to work. He's ready to win. He's ready to shine. And I'm looking forward to it. Gotcha. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate you, man. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? It's Havoc time. Let's go. Havoc up in the house. Remember that. <laughs> we are in the hurt business. Let's go. Gotcha. <laughs>